Uh, all I saw was a white car with blue stripes. I assumed it was a Shelby, did not know. Stopped to look at it. It had shotgun holes in it. <clears throat> it was used for target practice, apparently. So recently we sat down with Jay, who's the owner of CJ Pony Parts. We talked about the history of the company, how CJ's got here. The question everybody asks all the time is, Jay owns CJs. Well, actually, they think I own CJs. But once they figure out that I don't own CJs, they say, hey, you know, Jay must have a killer car collection. I know you're planning on adding to your collection in the near future, but you got a pretty decent collection of cars now. So you want to talk about a few of the cars you have? So let's talk about the car you most recently picked up, that 1993 Mustang GT out in the showroom. Yes, so a friend of ours uh, restored a car. It was his brother's car. Um, and he said, can we put it in the showroom for the winter time? I'm like, yeah, so he brings it in here and says it's not for sale. So I immediately say to him, if you ever want to sell it, just let me know. And of course, he went to sell it. It's a nice red fox body. Very nice, clean car. Yes. Very clean car, very nicely done. I said, hey, when you want to sell it in the future, let me know. So I think about a week or two went by and he said, yeah, I want to sell it. So after telling us he'd never sell it. Yeah. Yes, after he said he was never going to sell it, yeah. So we picked it up because it was a nice fox body. So tell us about uh, the 68 Bronco. I know we did, we did a lot of work on that over the years. My son's 22, so that had to be eight, nine years ago. He found that in Ocean City, Maryland. He was out one day and said, Dad, I found a cool car you gotta buy. So he took me to that, back to the 68 Bronco. He thought it'd be cool to work on. So he was 12, 13 years old. Um, we went, made a deal, we bought it, we brought it home, and, and CJ's redid it for us. So now it's his, his Bronco. Well, let's talk about your S550s you have two anniversary editions actually. Yes, so was that 2015 when they were coming out and there's 1,964 of them made. I think you, I put you to the task of finding I them remember. for me. So I said, <laughs> I remember you asking which color I wanted. I said I wanted one of each. And then up until what, two, three years ago, they both sat in the showroom. They both were wrapped till about two years ago. Yeah, they yeah. were wrapped right off the car carrier. They were sitting here. Um, and you decided you wanted to use one for videos. So we used the blue one. The white one still sits there, just like it rolled off the car carrier. Now, obviously you have a thing for 1968. You have a 68 Bronco, you have two 68 Mustangs, and your blue 2015 is actually number 68. What is it about the year 68? I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's, <laughs> the, it's the first car I found and fell in love with, um, my 68. And the Shelbys I always had something for. I thought the 68 Shelbys, 67, 68 Shelbys, they were just a bigger car than the original okay. Shelby. Not that I don't love those two, but the 68 has a cool body. The, I like the fastback. I like the big rear end of the car. It's, it's just a nice car. It's a nice looking car. The grill, I love it. Now let's talk about Shelby's because you actually have two of them. You have a 66 and a 68. The 66 is probably one of the most talked about cars at CJ's and it's the worst condition car we have here. 66, uh, so in the early to mid 80s when I was in high school, I found that car uh, sitting along the river in, in Duncannon, knocked on the door. The lady came to the door and said, the Mustang's not for sale. Can I look at it? She said, sure. At that time, there was a dog chain to it, so it was a dog house. <coughs> it had shotgun holes in it. <clears throat> it was used for target practice, apparently. Um, so I looked at it for a few years. It disappeared, so I figured someone took it and restored it, even though it wasn't for sale, like most classic Mustangs in the, in the day, to this day. A few years later, a customer of mine came in and I was talking about the car and he's like, I ha actually have that car if you're interested in it. I said, sure, let me know when you want to sell it. He had other Mustangs. So uh, one day he called me and said, hey, you can come get it. So I went over, it was underneath the cherry tree, underneath the tarp, all a damp, Shelby. rusted, <laughs> yes, rusted out with a six cylinder from a 70 coupe in it so he could drive it around. So we bought it that day and got the 70 coupe parts car um, and had it that way ever since. We pressure washed it put it in the showroom, and to this day, it's still sitting in the showroom, unrestored. Actually, I lied, we took it to Atlantic City one year. I remember. When Carroll Shelby was in Atlantic City car show, and he signed the roof and the fender of the car. I believe he was upset that the car actually looked that bad. He actually <laughs> said to his wife, this is an all original car here. <laughs> this one has not been restored. Very true. So. And tell us about the GT500. I know obviously it's a 68. We know uh, that that seems to be your year for sure. But I know that car, you, that was a somewhat recent purchase. Yeah, that was a couple in the of years, last maybe. five years yeah. maybe. Um, customer of ours, a good friend of mine, uh, has a nice collection of cars. And through the years, I've had different cars of his in our showroom for display. And then he sold a few of them. But I told him once again, if you ever want to sell your cars, let me know. So he called me a few summers ago and said, hey, that GT500 I have, I'm gonna sell. 
if you want to take it for a ride. I said, sure. So he drove it over here to me. We took it for a ride and I'm like, yep, got to have it. So I bought it that day. You actually have a couple 65s right now. Uh, you've got Project Betty, which is actually your car we're working on now down in the video department, and you've got 5030. Tell us about those two. 5030, I believe we bought as a shell. I believe. We it did. Is. Okay, 5030 we bought as a it shell. It was actually a junker that Ben Peterson fixed up and then we bought it back from him, yeah. Okay, so he bought a parts car from us, made it into a body again, then we restored it for SEMA. I've only driven it a few times. I love that car. Hopefully here in the next few years, we'll get it out of the show. Yeah, I definitely and this drive is the, it. This is the year. I want to put some miles in that car for yes. sure. It's, it's a cool car. And then Betty, obviously, we're gonna we're gonna make that one pretty cool too when we're done with it. I, I'm excited to see what you guys do with that one because it's so funny how we used to have 20, 30, 40, 65 coupes sitting around and no one wanted them. And now how hard did you look for that car you last can't find year? Them. You can't find you them. You can't find them. You can't find anything, especially in Pennsylvania, anywhere. And not reasonably priced yep. anyway, so. And it was I, the same when you got some of your other cars. It's just a friend of a friend. Like, you know, somebody who happens to have, that seems to be the best way to buy these anymore. So I'm excited to see what we do with that car. Obviously you're a Mustang guy, but you do like your Raptors. And I believe you have two of them currently. Tell us about those. For the new Gen 2 Raptor I got, I think it was sat parked you most of the time. You kept driving the old one, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, no matter how cool it looks, it doesn't sound like a V8. It's a different look. The Gen 3 Raptor comes out, we'll obviously get one of those. So I was going to say, you're excited that's my about daily the new driver. Raptor. That's my daily driver. I love it. V8's coming back, so that's a good thing. Now, currently, the only Chevy in your collection is uh, the 70 C10. Yes. Uh, I just think that's so cool. It's, uh, I like classic vehicles, a classic truck, the Chevy, Chevy C10. It's like, it's a beautiful, original looking vehicle. I think it's fun. You could do so much with it, just like a Mustang. And then obviously the final one is your 1968 coupe. Let's go out and have you show us that car. Okay, let's do it. So while it's obviously not the most valuable car that you own, sentimentally I believe it is. Tell us the story of this 68 month. So this 68 coupe I found uh, in 1984. I actually bought it on April Fool's Day 1984, so it's the car I've owned the longest. It's my first car, yeah. Um, it's the reason we're in this business is this car. Uh, when I found it, like I said, it was a shed with hay bales and uh, chairs in it. And then we restored it to drive it to school, put shackles on it, air and shocks back then it was it. like gloss black and Yep, it was metallic black. Very so mid-80s. Cool. Yep. Yes, with Kragers on it. So it was chrome and black. Um, and it was a great car. It was daily driver, it was 68 Mustang. So it had its problems, it had you know leaks and power steering went out on it and just daily problems. But it was a cool car, it didn't matter. We did restore this car for you in, I believe, 2005, 2006? Yes, the employees uh, restored this for me in 2005, back to original, seafoam green, uh, put new comfort weave bench seat in there for me, uh, the vinyl top, restored everything, the motor, the air conditioning. And talking about Mustangs, you, know, you got a bunch of cool Mustangs. We've talked about the modern Mustangs. You know, you're more in the classics, but as far as modern Mustangs go, I gotta ask, what are your thoughts on the Mach-E? I think it's gonna be cool. I think it's gonna be an amazing car. I, when you look at it, it's like, that's not a Mustang, but it is, it's a new model for the new car. And I think uh, if you don't buy one, I'm gonna buy one. I think it's something we ought to have. I definitely agree. Thanks for your time and thanks for showing us your cars. Thank you. Thank you.